Jet, Omen, KO, Killjoy, and Soba. These are the Guardians of Ascent. This exact comp is picked 70% of the time in Tier 1 Valorant. With their combined firepower, playmaking, and flexibility, these five have always dominated this map, making this fan favorite the ugh, most boring one in the game. That's all anyone plays. But loud are inevitable. These Brazilian juggernauts are altering everything you know about competitive Valorant. In their debut match of the 2024 VCT season, they whipped out a brand new comp that nobody has even imagined before. But why? What makes this group of meddling kids better than what's been proven to win championships? We have to decode their recipe to success, because this looks fun, right? Brace yourself, folks, because what you're about to see is pretty cringe. Ugh, I hate getting these stupid deadlocks in my games. Jimmy, what did I tell you? She's a good agent. I, I know, Teets, I know, but in ranked, I never know what I'm going to get. Throwers, no com, instalock duelists, or AFKers. How am I supposed to rank up when I have these idiots on my team? You know, there is a way to snuff these guys out, even if they're hiding their name. With the free Blitz app, you'll get a good idea if you're getting trolls as soon as you hop into Agent Select. These red flags can save your elo. And you get free intel on your enemies too. There's an in-game dynamic stats overlay that gives you real-time statistics telling you where you need to improve. And once the game's over, there's a post-game review showcasing every area of your performance. This includes combat score, damage, and headshot percentage in comparison to other players in your match. I mean, they also support League, TFT, Apex, Fortnite, CS2, and even Pal World. So what are you waiting for? Blitz is free, they literally save your elo, and they support this channel. Link in the description. Download it now or I'm stealing your shoes. It's alive. It's alive! Loud have done it. They've finally broken this stale, crusty ascent meta and have bust out not one, but three different agents that you never see on this map, including Phoenix. I forgot this guy existed. Now, every team comp has its strengths and weaknesses. More on that next round. But if there's anything that these five aren't lacking, it's utility. And Sentinels are about to feel every inch as allowed are slamming A this round. But little did the offense know, this is the perfect play because Sentinels are playing retake with a Killjoy microwave setup that'll catch anyone closing the door. But Zekin is tucked in attic, ready to get one and dash out and play said a retake. Can he get his? Loud barrel through the by phase behind a beefy fault line. That's already a free ult orb for Phoenix. Oh, well, why'd they have KO take the orb when the best part of Phoenix's kit is his ult being only six points and it gives him an extra life? Huh, <laughs> someone must be hungry. Regardless, loud scale close. But before they execute, Viper flips up her toxic screen, covering both arches and tree while Tui smokes cat. This smoke combo denies information from the defense, keeping them anchored and not stacked up towards A. What a space given. Nice towards it. Molly into the back with the aft shock as well. That's going to be... Supposedly a guaranteed kill, but here we go. Zekin was just tucked to the side and with a dash to disengage. Just like the stupid raccoons I have in my attic, Loud couldn't flush out Zekin in his strong off angle. When combined with these nanos, there's really only one way the offense can scale, making this first blood a layup. And this knife from the offense ended up being the perfect bait as a lot of teams will retake a site with Killjoy trying to play for damage or kills off site. It tagged her, so Loud thought that, yeah, site's clear. I mean, Sadik did have his knife out, so either he thought Sight was clear, or he was just that excited to get his second orb from planning. But Phoenix has gotten his old point, and Cowensin locks himself in a tree, trying to bait the door and catch the defense off guard to find the equalizer. Him and John QT exchange shots, but Sentinels now know they have a raccoon of their own in tree. Its current objective? Survive. Cowensin exits towards Cat. The longer he and his team stay alive, the higher percentage their artillery can win this round. Now that Cowensin stays alive really as well. Zekin knows that he repositioned there. As soon as this door opens, QCK might just go for the flash. But it looks like you want to try and fight this one forwards into the smoke. That's a right click from Zelsis. Deals with him handedly now. Two years locked down into hell. Are they going to clear him out here? Anchoring player towards the back. That's how. Kawazin's miles away. And that's a lineup being played by Les. 
Kawasin might be miles away here, but with the orb up as well, on top of that, the lineup, they want to try and push forwards into them. Celsius, he can't stick to the fuse when this is going on. Time is really running short. Time is really running out. Unless he's still alive. We've been all over the place. The knife in action. Half of the fuse. John QT, he's sticking all the way through. No time. They couldn't do it. Viper didn't see a single enemy this round, but she's the reason why they won. In this initial execute, she lined up her poison orb from A main to land on the spike. Throwing it from here means the percentage chance of her dying is literally zero, and she can play for lineups with both of her mollies. Her teammate's utility cleared out 95% of sight, so they didn't need hers. Zekin just played in an unexpected jet angle. Anyone else in there is getting traded. But by Breach shaking some booty in CAD and taking this earlier engagement, just look at how long he kept the defense distracted for. Every millisecond in this post bot mattered. As long as no one did anything too bold and forced the defense to waste time clearing all them out or wait for a peak that never came in Breach's case, their double lineup post plant plan won the round. This comp loves getting their hands dirty. With an entire arsenal of tools at their disposal, including seven flashes, fighting for map control is their bread and butter. Uh, tell me, how are you holding on to A main here? Allowed for the first time here, getting snarled up. The last two rounds not gone their way. Low buy. They wanna fight this? Oh my, and there we go, to punish. Here's a hint, you're not. Fault line, hot hands, zero point. Whatever Loud wants, they're going to get. Yeah, me and my crew are way hotter than that boring comp that everyone and their mom likes playing. Those guys suck eggs. Whoa, slow down there, Phoenix. Just because you guys can take map control by barely moving a muscle, that doesn't mean you guys are invincible. Editor, rewind the footage, please. The main issue with these five is that they don't have drones or scans to clear out smokes or close range angles. Isolated onto the side, he's got so much more to do. Tucked towards stairs, he dodged it, dodged the odd straight towards him. And Sassy, the one that comes up with the goods and gets out. Regroup would a bit more awkward, but with the door shut, they maybe don't have to worry about it. Flash play, less he plays off of it, picks it apart, and already gains the one, but still the place now. Need to get into the side, it's traded. Sadak, he's alone towards the back, and two years needs to really speed this one up because with Sadak dead, it's all on him. Zelsus can stick it, and it's all being covered. Now, we didn't see it in this game, but judges are these guys' as kryptonite. As without a space maker, they can't really get out of chokes to pinch these cringe players without getting eviscerated. I mean, even if you blind them, you can just hold left click and farm kills. So why not just give Tenz a judge and have him rat around his own smokes? But the same goes for the Odin. I'd actually tell my team to buy two of them. With how paper thin Ascent's walls are and no one to move forward quickly, how are any of these five supposed to get past a straight laser beam of bullets or even a single molly? One good lob and the defense is going to rotate and you're going to run into a stack. Meaning this comp has to default and split through mid. Going through one choke point will not work. Look, the score is six to five, but Ascent is a defender sided map. Tying the game here would be perfect for this utility-heavy squad going into the next half. Loud have everyone ready to pound it into A, but they're applying map-wide pressure to prevent a stack from forming, despite all being outside of A. The buy barrier falls. The offense immediately put up their toxic screen, Tui smokes off Cat, and Tadok flings his knife high into space. With these combined smokes, the defense are petrified that Loud could walk up Cat, towards arches to chain their flashes, or scrolling down to hit like and subscribe. But these smokes are useless. Armed with Kildra's lockdown, Sentinel's plan is to play retake on both sides and want to fight for mid, knowing that Loud have to take this space in order to hit. If the offense do go mid, Tenz is armed to paranoia either lane, and if they go to either site, John QT will flush them out. The knife lands, clearing out wine, while the attackers have contacted into main, and Sadakt activates his null command. Oh, wait a second. Are they not sending anybody through mid? Oh, Mr. Odin, time to eat. Killjoy Molly's off, there's a stun. Towards the side here with the smoke propped up. As he's spraying away, damage, Ooh. The Odin managed to do so much damage and stall for so long that all of the defense are here. But Sadak knew he had to hurry and close the door before his teammates got shredded too. But he whips out a healing potion. Okay, he just mollied himself. By going down while he was ulting, his teammates could res him and he'd be back to full, negating all this spam damage. But now that he's been restored, Loud have to deal with this lockdown. Back up to be on full HP. That's awesome. That is a crazy play. Still, all this huge will be combined. It's a Viper's pit as well. This is a foul concoction, isn't it? All the way forwards here, just trying to fight over the Killjoy. Set up this lockdown. The lockdown. Close in the corner. They're really defending this one. And Junior's detained. There was a chance. 
But that's what it would get left at. Jekin ripping off the heads. Sadak towards the side. It's a double face. The send to claim it. Seven to five in this first half. This has just been electric. Loud had the right idea by using the Rolling Thunder and Viper Spit to contest the lockdown, but I think this big fart cloud benefited the defense more than anyone else. Oh, editor! Yeah, yeah, I know. KO used his no command so that his team could stroll into sight without anything clogging up the choke. Well, besides some Odin spam, but they saved a lot of their utility because of this ultimate. And remember how I said this comp could take space without even trying? Well, this Rolling Thunder was a good start, as it covers a lot of potential crossfires. But could you imagine how fried Sentinel's retinas would have been if Loud scaled in a tree behind one, two, three, and four flashes? But this Viper Spit allowed the defense to just sit back and unload their mags into this narrow choke. Viper nerfed the punches that her team could throw, allowing Sentinels to gain the upper hand. Another thing about Loud's comp is that they strong arm you into playing their game. Everyone on their roster is armed with at least one ability that's going to stop and execute. Yeah, Jet can updraft and get past all this nonsense, but her teammates are going to get left in the dust. They too are going to have to default and take mid control, meaning that it is very crucial that the defense fight for the space hard and early to condition Sentinels not to come this way, but rather through these narrow chokes. So if Loud can contain them just on sight, their retake should be potent enough to overwhelm their opposition. With that game plan in mind, the defense start the second half in a 1-3-1 formation. Stall in the wings and the brawlers in mid alongside a nasty Viper Ball that we'll come back to later. But Sentinels, unlike their fans, weren't born yesterday. They know that Loud are going to contest mid and force them into the wings. So they're feigning mid pressure and then are slamming A. Both teams open the round by trading smokes. One for Cat to emulate a mid-take, and one for a main to make it look like it's being contested. But both teams are putting on fronts. Zelsis looks up into the sky, flings his knife to clear out a main, and says he moves forward into tiles to activate his Aldrone. This combination of utility makes it seem like Sentinels are defaulting across the map, and you even see Loud move into position to combat mid. But Tui's brain is too big. He's purposely gotten tagged by the knife to make Sen think he could be in Wine or near Bricks, which would force out an extra molly. But he has to reveal himself, because knowing whether or not attackers are in a main is crucial to Loud's protocols. Jump spot to you, sees it. They want to punish this actually. There's a dash active. Second, he's waiting for the flash as well into his own smoke. Could be the counter play. Damage through the smoke. Sadak like lucky. Tui's barely escaped with his life, and Sadak got slapped upside the head for trying to help him. But Loud have Sentinels trapped right where they want him. Now that the door is closed and the offense are locked in, they're about to feel the full force of this utility dump. The smoke. I think that's extremely likely. I mean, they still have so Stun, much user. paranoia, nades, it's all being combined! And Loud got everything to deal with this one. Smoke in their face as well. Celsius is completely isolated away. Damage being done. Chong Q team knocked down to absolutely almost anything. They're just spamming away into the smoke. Maybe Celsius can get lucky. Bit of RNG, maybe with a clacky. Oh, he's dodging all these bullets well enough, but still only good for the one. It's traded out wide. Tarek dealing with it, sticking it. Two years, there's only two bullets left. And it's not going to be enough. All right, let's go through our checklist. Generator, check. Close door and anyone being flushed out of generator. Check. All of hell. Check. Ooh, a near side of molly combo to damage anyone trying to escape. Nice touch. Check. And finally, a smoke for main. Yep. Loud filled all the boxes and have literally hit every single possible spot to play on site for this retake. Without any extra space in tree, the offense never stood a chance behind this tsunami of utility. This comp hits, and they hit hard. After converting the Annie Eco, Loud tried their own version of a Tiles Crunch. Into this boring team comp, KO would toss a flash over this wall and Jet would dash to follow up off it ASAP. But Phoenix doesn't have a dash, he has his legs. And with Viper's Ball shielding him from top mid, this is what it looked like. Suda maybe gonna be, gonna be waiting, potentially Sassy's here, he's holding for all of this. A flash on top of it, just combining all of it. <laughs> and they're out of there. Yeah, they don't bad. want anything to do with it. And a different Viper Ball from Les that actually covered top mid, so they weren't worried about that position. Uh, Loud's plan was to fight anyone in these two areas, and when the offense saw all this commotion, they would book it into A, but have to deal with this triple layered Viper Wall that looks pretty scary and is annoying to clear. Surely a knife to make initial space, three flashes, one being from KO while him and Omen ran it down B main, and two from Phoenix and Breach would be enough to herd the attackers into A, right? 
I mean, these two are not something you want to mess with. Similar to this Reyna Sky Flash combo I covered in a previous video, Breach flashes first, so you would naturally try to turn away, but then Phoenix flashes right after to catch you as you look back. Yeah, don't mess with me and my buddy. We'll f you up. Okay, Breach, relax. This combo is strong and all, but it's kind of predictable. I mean, you're not quiet. The defense hear you running at them. It isn't surprising that Sentinels got away. Instead, I think Ko would have been a better partner here. Uh, hold on, let me fix this. Put Breach outside here. Ko, where you went, and Viper, you stay there. Perfect. Now with Breach playing on B, he can use his kit to catch anyone hiding behind Hut or hiding in this cubby or escaping this fireworks show while being able to flash out for himself and Nomen. Now, keep in mind, the reason why tile crunches work so well is because they're quick and hit you when you least expect it. But no one on loud is fast. Anyone with half a brain is going to run away like Sentinels did here. Now with this fault line, you can cover all the bases and the trap would look like this. KO knife for early info, Omen paranoia to push the enemy back, and when Phoenix and Omen both get close, you flashpoint, combo a KO Phoenix flash, fault line, and maybe even an aftershock for HUT. This pinch would work even better than a tiles crunch because every option's covered. If you're in tiles, you're blind. If you're behind this HUD or in this cubby, you're stunned or blasted. And running away isn't an option as you can't cover this distance quickly enough. And with Phoenix's run it back online, I still think this gives you enough utility for a decent retake on A. But Sentinels got away and Loud tried to predict that they'd rotate over here, but they didn't. Because the offense took too long to rotate, Sentinels predicted that Loud would be here by now. So they slowed down, took their time, re-cleared the hot zone, including this pressure smoke Tui tried to throw, and contacted all the way through B main before taking the site and winning the round. Which, by the way, is another weakness of this comp. Without a lot of info gathering tools, or even a sentinel, it's hard to truly keep track of where the attackers are. But at least they can fight. <sighs> okay, so what was the title card again? Oh, yeah, right. <clears throat> After last round's pinch didn't work, Louder positioned in a new 2-1-2 setup where Breach and Viper have a nasty Odin trap in main, where if Breach spots someone, Viper's going to melt them with her Odin, as anyone who just walked through this orb is going to be low. Phoenix is spotting mid, while these two fight for space on A. And Sentinels know how vital mid is to their attack side, as Sassy rips it off for arches as soon as the round starts. The QCK dodges it, but he moves back a second too early, almost costing him his life. QCK falls back, pulls out his self-healing potion, that actually heals him, and Sentinels progress up mid. With this newfound map control, the offense wait for reaction from the defense, but nothing happens. So John QT makes a mid-round call. Omen, go smoke tree. Ko, uh, throw your knife in there too. Since the Loud don't have any info gatherers, they'll freak out and they should be pushed out of position for our B split, or at least waste some of their util. Sentinel smoke, knife, but Loud counter with a cross map fault line and paranoia. This fake pressure has immediately been canceled out, but with John QT's lockdown, Sentinel should have enough room to take the site. He slams it, and the split starts to funnel in. Les can't get out. He's stuck. All he has is this little pocket of air. Be main. Seconds through as well for the B split. Extra elements into the mix. Less running back. Is there going to be the gap to play in? He's There's blind. a Molly. Really good timing from that one, and he is fully blinded up. That's tens of the util. Excellent stuff. 30 seconds left. Even though the lockdown cleared sight, Sentinels did a great job at clearing any squatters. Molly for stairs, arrow and spawn to prevent spam, and this paranoia filled the only breathing room Les had left. And now without their Viper wall, can Loud still retake? Great positioning from Celsius. He's got a second to swing off as well. Yeah, man down now. After shot flash. Looks like a fast play into this one, but they weren't accounting for that close corner as well that's being played because the, the door it hasn't been opened. Didn't break the market door. Phoenix, what was your plan here? You still had a couple flashes, Breach had util, and Kaya wasn't even ready to go out. Uh, this is why no one picks you in pro play. You're an idiot. <sighs> Whatever. So Viper going down here is a lot more problematic than you think. Her wall serves three main purposes, one of which we'll cover now. You can anchor down sight with it, or even better, when it goes up, main and lane both get blocked off, making it really difficult for attackers to fight up in the post plant. So Loud could just scale up, clear front sight, drop the wall, clear lane, and then utility dump back sight. But because Sentinels were coming in from both market and main, Viper didn't have an escape plan. Breach didn't have his stun to get her out, Omen deployed his smokes to prevent a potential A hit, 
and they can only realistically clog one lane with their mollies. But this still doesn't excuse what Phoenix did. He tried coming out with this breach flash, but KO wasn't ready. With pressure coming from market, Jet wouldn't have felt comfortable swinging lane, and this retake still could have worked with main smoked off. But in this round, Sentinels abused each of Loud's weaknesses. Their lack of info, which baited out their util and tree, they took their life source in mid so Loud couldn't stall the split, and it destroyed the retake in the end. Sentinels take the lead. Remember when I said that a judge would wreck Loud's team comp because they don't have drones? Well, in the following round, Sadek managed to cancel out Sassy's drone with his zero point. And when you don't have anything to clear smokes or close angles, this is what can happen. Oh boy. No, Sadak, Sadak, Sadak is there. The spike's been dropped down on top of it. You see Shay with the molly. Denying any chance of that. Trying to be a split into the site here. That's an no old command. Oh! And a shotgun's repositioned. That's dirty, man. It's disgusting. It's devastating. Turns TP's forwards, though, into his own smoke. That's matters into his own hands. And he wants to, to have another go of it. So, like, shutting it down with a right foot upgrade. And yeah, he's pulled out of nowhere. Now, that's what I wanted Tens to do in the first half. Grab a judge and start bonking idiots. But speaking of punishes, Loud have started to realize that Sentinels have been prioritizing mid. So now would be the perfect time to utilize the other two parts of this toxic screen. They're formed in a 3-2 ready to stop this mid abuse. And armed with their Bladestorm, Sentinels are going to split be faster than you could say ring that bell. And they're not playing very passively to start the round. They're, oh, they're all the way in. QCK though. Zekin got stopped right in his tracks. Not by this wall, and not by Phoenix, but both. Viper's Curtain covers lane and main like we covered already, but also Arches and Cat, so that the defense can put it up, scale out a reclear mid in the late round, flash out deeper to Brawl, but better yet, counter these Sova darts. When up, Phoenix can tuck himself into this narrow cubby, allowing him to dodge any scans and fight mid shortly after. So even if Sentinels dart mid, if this wall is up, it doesn't mean it's clear. And by fighting mid like this, you'll scare the offense away right into those narrow choke points that your mollies are great at clogging. Anywho, because Zekin ran into this brick wall in mid, his teammates have used this time to gun it up B and take the site before loud rotate, and it's too late. All of Sentinels quickly funnel through lane, but Tens has taken this brief window to teleport to the spawn and find the equalizer. Tens is cooking. Tens is more than cooking, maybe overheating. Spike planted. Tens couldn't even the advantage, and now it's up to the guys on site to hop up and step up to the plate. T forced to run to the side. Paranoia sweeping out. through, and he's worried about the market players pushing forwards. There's two more players to meet him. They're more than aware of it. That is nice at least to just grab the one, but it leaves it just out of Sassy now, and it's a 1v4. The guy has been a menace, but what can you really do? Running and cutting seems to be the aim of the game. Sentinels need to be careful. If they keep poking around in mid, they're going to get burned. Loud aren't convinced they've stopped Sentinels from taking mid, so they're in a similar formation as last round, ready to teach these guys a lesson. And their read is right. Sentinels are hungry for more, ready to try and take this space again. The more cautious approach is generally going to be better for Sentinels. Here, the recon darts got broken, so Sen should expect someone to be playing close minute. No way. No way. It's a refight out. They're just trying to play it through into cards. Not getting punished. Still, they hold their ground. Instead of letting Sentinels come into their territory this time, Loud brought the attack to the attackers. Loud recognized that Sentinels might be so focused on this new cubby, or just the wall itself, that they wouldn't expect a barrage of flashes. And remember, if Loud lose mid, their mollies won't be enough to stop an execute coming from multiple chokes. So while this fight might seem bold, it was the right play. So they waited for Sentinels to get a bit closer, and wham! The defense hit him with a 1-2 Phoenix KO flash combo. And after that mid brawl, Sentinels tried to group up in NB, but with so little HP, that was never going to work. They're just anchoring, but less tucked to the side. Flash play just wasn't accounted for. Tens is all over the place. Loud have turned their cheats on and have every tool in their belt at their disposal this round. And their conditioning has worked. Sentinels have gotten their lunch money stolen in mid in back-to-back -back rounds, so the offense have decided to cut their losses and just slam A. But if you remember pistol round, this is exactly what Loud want. The defense are playing far back in spawn, banking on another hard-hitting retake, and some spam through some smokes. But they can still contest some space. Zekin slingshots past the by phase behind a paranoia, darting crane to catch anyone running away, 
while Loud have countered with a fault line and knife of their own. Jet was ready to swing and fry some noobs, but her team has yanked on her leash. No one was ready to go out with her. The play was just too risky with three defenders here. Plus, there's a pretty big gap in the door smoke. Loud threw a molly just to be safe and lay her on a smoke to shut the offense out. But wait a second, if three players are near tree, that means mid and B have to be weak. Otherwise, Loud are leaving a big gap in their defense somewhere. So Sentinels start to backtrack while Silva and Jet stick around to keep the defense committed to the site. Zelsis knives before leaving. Sassy activates his Aldrone and then rips a shock in a tree. Now, Loud have already used their KO knife. They don't have anything else to gather them intel. So in their heads, it feels like most of Sentinels are here. Phoenix shifts from mid to A and Viper slots in the mid where she can get out with her toxic screen. Teets! 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 Dude, dude, what? Isn't it kind of weird that Loud are leaving B butt naked? Yeah, but Jimmy, look at their abilities. Sentinel should be the one shaking in their boots. If they don't want to get rocked, they're going to have to recognize that Sight has been left at Ghost Town and then fight in the spawn so that the defense can't coordinate all their firepower onto Sight. Normally, taking fights like this is risky, but I think it's risky. You're just hoping that you're going to win a fight while stunned, suppressed, and in a six versus five, uh, Sentinels are going to get boned. So Tens teleports with his ult, clears out backside. And now that this cross map knife lineup from Sadak hits, their suspicions get confirmed. It's B, but it's too late. Zelsis is already up lane and, oh no. Sentinels are grouped up in B main. This is the adjustment. Well, they have to play away from the breach ult, don't they? Exactly, yeah. I know the no utils just far too much. Hunter's Fury from far, far away here. Rolling Thunder on top of it, tries to set it up. Colliding and collapsing, but those aren't really kills. Just dropping a player as well. And the ult that's from on top of it, Kalazine, is just running all the way forward. Another bit of util in his hands, but his teammates are just watching the right angles, collecting up the kills of the fuse coming out. And they need to try and stop this one. Just can't get past less. That next line of defense, just watching for the right angles. I told you, Sentinels got screwed. Because they didn't fight up in a spawn or market, Loud had space to activate both their run it back and a null command, automatically making this retake a pseudo seven on five. Sentinels tried to counter by piercing the defense with their Harness Fury, but because KO path through market and then lane, his suppress hit Sassy, canceling his ult. Then as Breach got closer, his big box of hurt covered every inch of sight. And when Loud realized that sight was clear, Les held his ground in logs, knowing that the rest of Sentinels had to be holed up in B main. He cleaned house, and once again, we see what happens when you don't make adequate space against this comp. They didn't even need these ults. There was a lot of leftovers. Sentinels just got spanked for not taking enough map control. So how do they adjust? It looks like they're getting ready to fight mid in an initial 1-3-1 default, and I love this idea. We didn't get to see it because the round started too late, but Silva aired Arches, KO knife Market, and 10 smoked Catwalk. To the defense, who have no reconnaissance, this looks like Sen are taking mid. The offense are trying to lure the defense in with their bells and whistles, hoping they'll pivot over and come fight mid. But there's one way that Loud can gather info that we haven't talked about yet. Peeking. And Phoenix is posted up top mid with an op. Oh, what'd you say? Phoenix can't use the op? Oh, sure he can. Look, anyone can use the op. This weapon is used to punish poor scaling and spacing. That's why it works so well in ranked. It's just that Jet, Reyna, Chamber, or Yoru raise the sniper's skill potential. Plus, Loud haven't used it all game, so this would be a good time to whip it out. But by Phoenix peeking down this line, he's snuffing out all of Sentinel's fake pressure utility. That's also why their wall isn't up. And because it's been quiet for so long... Hey, mid's quiet. These clowns are headed for the wings. Stay strapped, you guys. So Tui's refreshes his one way, and Breach fault lines B, and Les goes for a quick swing. Crickets. Maybe they're headed back to mid? I wish I had a drone to find out. But Viper spots Sentinels. KO ult. Viper ult. Who wins the race? Spots it. Offloading the pit here. Ult was not online here. Updraft. Dash now active too, but how do they want to clear this one with the Paranoia drone potentially available to them, but does it really cut into it? Zelsus has been dropped less. He's got a shorty in his hands. Adjustments, but only two bullets to really do the damage. And they're dropping all sorts of players. John QT. Sentinels cannot funnel through one choke against this comp. <sighs> To be fair, they tried faking pressure mid to make sure they wouldn't get stuffed like this, and KO tried to ult before Viper could, but this demonstrates another reason why Loud's comp isn't a troll. You need to understand that each comp has its strengths and weaknesses. Loud can't make space, so they get creamed by Judges and Odins. No scans to clear smokes either. But they have a lot of stall and firepower for retakes. Being able to recognize how to abuse a comp is what separates the good teams from the best. But this round isn't over. Because of this bloodshed on B, Tuis has realized that all of the space is free real estate. 
his new objective is to not swing man and take a 1v1 gunfight that's going to get traded out, but instead to contain the offense. If he dies, Sentinels can go anywhere and Loud won't know. Remember, they don't have a Sentinel. So he heard them run out of B main, has teleported towards Sabrosa, hears them sprinting up tiles, and teleports to top mid. The longer he stays alive, the more information he can feed his teammates. He starts silently jump spotting the cross in mid, peeks into spawn, still nothing, but then barely spots Killjoy. Tuis quickly deploys a one-way for Tree to try and stall the offense, but this is their last chance, the last opportunity for Sentinels to stop Loud from getting to match point. KO gets into heaven, Omen retakes a main, Sentinels are pinched, but after Tuis reveals himself, he ults away to rejoin his teammates, but to Sentinels, he could be anywhere. Start to account for it. three players at the door though, and it's only Zekin just holding close to the corner. He's just immediately cleaned up. Shaktar didn't clean up the kill, but it's only just Sassy collecting it, not planning for them. Sadak defusing, sticking, knows his teammates have got it all the way through. He's got half running backwards and forwards, half on it already. Oh, it's all over. This comp rocks socks. Kind of like Paper X's old ascent comp. This one was even crazier.